Thank you. Okay, we'll call the meeting to order. And I'd like to start with um, introductions. So um, we have Barbara Hirsch here on the far right. And Barbara is our public art um, expert and a consultant for the Committee to Approve Public Art, which we call ourselves CAPA. And then immediately to my right is Michael Addison, who is a member of the Public Art Committee and also the chair of the Arts Commission. And there's me, you all know who I am. And Marcy Tosher, who's also a member of the Arts Commission and on the Public Art Committee. And finally, John Merck, who is on the Planning Commission and is here to ask questions about anything that has to do with nuts and bolts that we might not normally um, think about. So that's who we are, and welcome. We have two groups here, and we're going to start with the Ojai Valley Inn and Spa. And they have a, a, a really a twofold request, and I want to take this request. In, uh, first, I should probably say, um, James, help me out here. Um, should I give this introduction and then have public comments? Um, actually, because the public comments will be the presentation, right? Of yeah. The well, so there's public comments for items not on the agenda, which we don't have any members of the public, so we can bypass okay. that. Right. Um, and then, right, and then we could take it during each of the items. Okay. So um, I want to um, separate the presentation into two separate uh, issues because there are actually two separate requests being made. One is to relocate the table from the original spot where it was approved and we'll let you speak to that in a minute and the second request is a revision of the budget that eliminates the benches which i believe there were two the two benches and that's a, a really a, a, a separate consideration um, so let's start with um, relocating the table and uh, ryan is here ryan lang the artist and phil from the inn is here and if you'd like to come up and speak into the mic and talk about uh, the relocation and the reason for that and, and help us with the site map as to where it actually will be. Certainly. Uh, Phil Nelson with the Ojai Valley Inn. Uh, as you indicated, the table was originally approved at the location shown on the, this diagram that you have. It was kind of a central location in the main uh, thoroughfare of the project site. When we went through our review process with the Ventura County, County Fire Department, they were concerned about a table being located there in right in the middle of an egress path and it did not allow enough um, room between the edges of the tables and the trees to really allow an adequate egress out of the site in an emergency even though in the other uh, problem they had an issue with is that the table being lower and as people are moving out in mass and kind of dividing around the table some might not see that in time and actually run it <clears throat> excuse me, run into the table, or it could become an obstruction of some sort. So they asked us to look at options for relocating the table that wouldn't present those kinds of obstacles. We looked at a number of them and came up with the location that you'll see on the diagram that's in red. This is actually in a courtyard that we're dedicating, calling the artist courtyard. It's right outside of the culinary center, and it's right in a main uh, entryway into the site that uh, most of our guests who will be pedestrians staying at the resort will actually be coming in through that entry point and coming through that courtyard and seeing the table as they go into the culinary building or into the rest of the site. So we think it's a really an ideal location. It allows us to kind of dedicate that whole space, as, as I said, the artist courtyard uh, and make it um, another one of the key features of the whole project area. Okay, um, we'll start at the left and see if commissioners have any questions for you. Of course. Sorry, with John? I don't have any questions about the location. I'm just concerned about the, the benches and the mm -hmm. design okay. of the table. And, and we'll get to that. <clears throat> okay. Likewise, we'll talk about the uh, benches, but questions about the location. Okay. The fire, I, I see that opposite. Is your mic on? Uh, I see that opposite the table towards the, if you're looking down on the, the um, site plan, to the right, is that a fireplace in the middle there? To the right, it looks like a fire pit or a fireplace. Down the center line yeah. of the previous location or the current location? That's correct. That is a, fire, a fireplace. And the fire department right here. 
okay. And the fire department didn't have any issue with that in terms of egress and ingress in the event of a they fire? They don't, be, because if you look to the left, you'll see two large kind of gray rectangular shapes next to the buildings. Yeah. Those are the main entry and exit from the buildings. So the fireplace is actually uh, beyond where people would be coming out of the buildings and exiting out to the parking lot. The fireplace is on the other side of that. They wouldn't be coming out and turning left. They'd be coming out and, and headed towards the parking lot. <clears throat> there wouldn't be any way to um, switch the two? The fireplace would still present the same obstacles. We did look at moving the fireplace around they as well. They would still object to that. It looks smaller. Fire like department the footprint route. looks smaller. It is smaller, but it still provide. It still is that obstacle and the spacing, although better, mm -hmm. was not really what the mm -hmm. fire department wanted to see. Likewise, see. if you were to um, turn the table on its axis and make it more of a we looked vertical at turning to it, that space. Yep, we looked at turning it as well. Yeah. Um, the place where it would fit is kind of right in between where those two entry exit points are out of the buildings. Mm -hmm. There was concern also with it being there, mm -hmm. uh, that it still would present somewhat of an obstacle. Not as much, admittedly, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but they really had asked us to find some way to move it outside mm -hmm. of the central mm -hmm. courtyard. And um, the garden court, the artist's courtyard, ingress and egress, I don't understand when you said, so peop people coming to the culinary center will see it, Absolutely. but a casual passerby. Actually, they will, because if you came in through the center uh, and you're looking to your right, the hedges that are there don't completely block the view. I think All in right, the packet, so, that's, so you're, you're saying that coming in through this way, correct. they'll be able to have a sight line Absolutely. that way. Mm -hmm. Which way are people most likely to come in then? Right where your finger is, you, there's a, keep going down, there's an aisle right there. So that's a walkway that's connected to the sidewalks on the property. And then they come in like And here. they'll be coming down that main walkway. And they'll see it. And then they'll come right through what's labeled as the vestibule sorry, area. Could you, hold, could you hold up the sure, diagram and show yep. it to us, please, so we know what you're talking yeah. about? So this is the parking lot area. The rest of the resort is over here. This corridor down here is a main entry sidewalk. It's tied into the sidewalks on the property. And most of our guests will be staying at the, at the resort. So we anticipate they'll actually be coming in this way, going to a culinary event or something else, or then from that point coming into the rest of the property. We don't anticipate them really coming through the parking lot as much. We'll be directing them more down that, that corridor. Okay, because um, when this concept was presented initially, part of keeping it accessible to the public and visible to the public was that it was off of the parking lot and that people would kind of see it and that's like the announcement that you're coming into this area whereas it seems like where you have it here people will be specifically headed towards that culinary event center and uh, not as prominent in terms of a visual unless you, you that's your destination and what are the hours of the culinary center going to be? We haven't established those yet. It'll depend on the events that are being held in there. Mm -hmm. I just to me, um, did you think at all about moving it instead of kind of in the area between all of the buildings, but moving it um, out on the other side towards the parking lot? Anywhere in this central corridor was going to present the same Even if it's outside, let's say, the office space, and then it's, you know, kind of outside of that area. The, you know, outside, are you talking like down in here? No, well, more t towards the center. We, we, we get into the parking, parking area lot. here. There really isn't much room to place the table and have enough area around it to, to give it the kind of visual impact that we want to give it. We didn't want it to feel like it was stuffed or cramped into a place, you know, uh, just to have it there. We wanted to make it a real centerpiece type of item. And I think as people, even if they're coming in through the center, coming out of the, the, the banquet area, right. the view lines into the artist's courtyard are still going to be quite open. They're going to see this. And, and we would, uh, you know, have some uh, identification that that's what it is, the artist courtyard. And then we have this table in there. We plan to promo that, so it'll be 
guests staying at the resort will be aware that we have this feature here. <clears throat> yeah, I just wanted to run through all possibilities and see. We looked at a number of them. You, you know, we didn't want to go any further deeper into the site because fewer and fewer people would probably see it. Uh, we wanted to keep it up front. We wanted to keep it in trafficked areas. Right. Uh, up here, there are also restrooms. So anyone coming out to use the restroom is going to be coming right by the table. Does this courtyard close off? Is it, does no. it, so it's always open? It's open. It's always open. Always open. Okay. Okay. Move on to uh, Michael, right. uh, Ryan, you have to get up to the uh, thing. Around. Yeah, what Ryan is saying is the, these uh, four uh, circles represent citrus trees that will be in the courtyard. Mm -hmm. Citrus trees. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. It will be a very inviting place for people to come and just reflect or just see what we have okay. there. All right. Okay. Uh, Michael Addison. No, I don't Thank really you. have any other questions except I'm still um, – concerned about your guests you say would be coming to the culinary center but they might also be coming to the banquet hall is that not correct but they will yes so in either case they'd come along that walkway that you pointed out which is on our diagram below the parking lot mm -hmm. correct and what would they do then would they go through the vestibule they yes, they'll enter through the vestibule, which is not a—it's not an enclosed space. It's an open space. There's no roof. Okay, so those are low hedges Correct. that define that space. So as they walk along that walkway, then they would see the table in its present location. Correct. They'll see the table the whole distance Correct. as they're walking. So the only diminished view, perhaps, would be those who arrive by car and park up in that parking lot. If they're coming in through the center, it won't be directly in front of them, but it would be to the right as they come in. Yeah. And if they use the restroom while they're there, they're going Where's to see the, the table. But if they, are, if they are heading to the banquet hall, and if their focus is on getting to the banquet hall, chances are they won't be drawn to look at the table, correct? It's a possibility. But so, I think we'll have some signage, some identification that we have this artist cart courtyard we have the table that's in there and the significance of that. So let, let me ask this question. In your present estimates of how you're going to use uh, the barn, do you anticipate that the banquet hall and the culinary center will be used equally by people arriving by car or guests at the hotel? We anticipate both will be primarily used by guests of the hotel. Most of the events that are being booked there are for uh, either group events or weddings where they're already staying at the okay. resort. All right. I don't have any other questions. Okay. Uh, Barbara? No questions. Okay. Then I'm, I go last. Um, my first question is the garden court, the new location of the mm -hmm. table, is this an existing courtyard or is this part of the construction of the whole center? It's part of the construction. Of the whole, the whole center. center. So it's Correct. a new spot. Correct. Because the inn does have an artist, already have an artist place, does it not? We have an artist mistaken? cottage over by the spa, which oh, is yeah, a building. Yes, which was confusing to me yes. when I heard it was in yeah. the art. I thought, well, now you're applying for off-site. Right. No. <laughs> so I just want to clarify that. No. Um, do you have other art planned for the artist's courtyard, or will the table be a standalone? Well, the table will be the signature centerpiece. Uh, you know, depending on how the, I guess we'll look maybe at some other opportunities for other types of art. I'm not aware of any plans for anything specific, but we do want to make maximum use of that artist courtyard is exactly that, to be able to show off, show some of the pieces, show some of the art, the local art. But the, the table will be the signature permanent piece. And then I just want to make a general comment, which I'm um, going to give an example uh, to help with the understanding of this, that the guests of the inn are considered the public. So when we say open to the public, we don't necessarily mean that it has to be open to all the public, but it has to be open to the public just as, here's my example, at Wild Tennis Academy, we have a piece of public art that is largely seen by the students 
and their visitors from all over the world and people who come to the tennis tournament. And that absolutely qualifies. Or another example would be the pieces that are going in cottages among the flowers will largely be seen by the residents that buy those homes there. So um, it qualifies as long as it's open and someone from the outside could come in and see it. And once we put our public art tours together, it'll be right there, so. It, and absolutely, there, there won't be gates on it. It's open to the public 24-7. As you may know, we have many members of the public that walk our property every day. It's, it's just a beautiful place to walk, and we, we're happy to see them, so okay. certainly would love it for them to stop by and see the mm -hmm. table. Right. Do you have a question? Oh, you have, Barbara. Uh, how much smaller would the table have to be to um, go with the fire we looked at that as well probably about six feet wow. and uh, which we thought that would just really the change piece, the yeah. whole the table, table would be six feet mm -hmm. six feet less less so three feet on each side and it just would we just think it would lose its gravity okay. you know and, and we wanted to preserve that mm -hmm. yeah any other questions nope uh, um, then I'm going to suggest that we um, go ahead and have a motion that is just about um, approving the new location for the table. So if somebody wants to make that motion and second it. I move that we approve the relocation of the table to the artist courtyard. I'll second that. Uh, James, you want to do a roll call sure. or all in favor? I'll do a roll call. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Hirsch? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Addison? Yes. Commissioner Tosher? Yes. Commissioner Merck? Yes. And Chair Col uh, Golden? Yes. Okay, so um, moving the table to the new location uh, has been approved. And a second item that we're going to discuss concerning the inn, and I want to give a little background on this as well is what really amounts to a change order, which in the public art process we do not um, <coughs> allow change orders that have to do with budget concerns. Because, and I know you're new to the public art process, but the public art process, you're given a set amount of money and you have to work within it. And um, the complete package included two benches. And you're asking now not to do those two benches. So we need reasons other than budget because it's sort of almost like a, <laughs> Um, something that we don't consider. Um, but we would consider eliminating the benches if you can show an artistic reason not to include them. If you can show that it just won't work or it just doesn't fit. Sure. You're so I want to witness. start with that. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ryan. Um, so, Ryan Lang, uh, Los Padres Live Edge um, artist. Um, well, aside from budget, the, the benches were, were part of the, the project originally, um, but they were never going to be a centerpiece. They were never supposed to be what you are in awe of. Um, they were an additional side because the lumber was available and I was gonna be milling uh, a significant amount of trees for the end regardless. Um, with those being there, they were special, but sometimes, especially if you're going to look from an art standpoint, the meat and potatoes of the whole thing is the table. And by changing the location a little bit as well, adding, adding benches and putting them into the courtyard didn't seem the same thing as having it as you walk up through the area that the fire department was not allowing. So for us, uh, focusing 100% on the table seemed to kind of eliminate any other further problems with bench placement or fire department or any of that stuff. And for us really, it's, it's, it's taking a significant amount of time with the table and I would rather focus 100% on it. So that's what, that's what our plan is. Um, yes, the budget has changed a little bit, but mostly due to the fact that this is enormous, <laughs> the table is, and, and that's I'm sure why the fire department was concerned with where it was placed. Um, I, I thought about the fireplace and the same type of thing of why is it, why is the fireplace allowed to be there but the table is not. Um, when I spoke with some of the people that were in the fire department, they said it's so tall that people see it coming out. So for them, 
the table was more of a concern because of its width and gigantic. They, you know, they didn't really understand that this was even a, a table, and which it's not. It's it's a sculptural, decorative, art piece. Um, with it being so heavy, this is a, a different for me as an artist because I can't move it <laughs> at all. It's each piece is individually moved by heavy equipment for this project. Uh, if I want to move it and and inlay the steel, I have to use a forklift. It's not movable. So it's it's an immense table. Um, and and by having that be the center, I believe that it's it's a great choice. The benches are not, uh, in my opinion, a loss um, as much as the gain of the majesty of the table itself. So. Okay. Thank you, Ryan. Um, so we'll start at the other end this time. Barbara, any questions or comments? I, I do. Um, could you refresh us with the um, story? Mm -hmm. Is it, yeah, yeah what sure. Is the main point of the story? So uh, we, we started by just salvaging the, tr the timber, salvaging the trees that they removed for the project. Um, and they were transported to Upper Ojai. Excuse me, I, I don't mean the history of it. Yeah. I mean the, um, what are you saying with this table? Oh, um, well, that is going into that. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I know. Yeah, um, the, the story of the table is, is the, the reuse of the trees that were existing on the inn's property and the fact that the fire charred and burned the, the series of logs that we were destined to use for some part of the project, but not necessarily the main piece, but the significance of the, of the fire itself and using that as a remembrance, but also kind of a rebirth on the property is, is what's gonna be surrounding the entire table project. Had nothing to do with, I, I mean, I, I understand all of that, mm -hmm. but was, why, what, I mean, was the table used as the image? Why was the table used? I mean, it could have been an incredible sure. large sculpture, <clears throat> abstract. Sure. Um, I think because it blends well with their culinary thought. It's, it's a culinary center, and where do you surround the culinary? It's, it's around the table. Even though this is not a table to be eaten at, it's as if you would be going into a culinary space and seeing a giant spoon or you know it it it, it represents what this facility is but not a usable table it's decorative all right and i just feel that the culinary theme and you did mention that that was part of it um, requires the benches to round it out Anything else? Okay, okay, Michael? Well, I have exactly the same concerns. As originally presented, it was presented as a wonderful union of form and function, right? Which is a substantial aesthetic consideration. Mm -hmm. a table and benches. Now, you said just a moment ago that the table will not be eaten at, and yet I'd be very surprised if when one saw the table in the culinary center, you didn't expect that in some way it would be used for a display of fancy gourmet items or whatever. But it could also, as originally presented, have been a place where people indeed could sit and eat, could sit and sample the wares. So I think what you're asking for is really a substantial shift. It's not just a minor, oh, we can just get rid of the benches. I think you're presenting an idea which suggests that this is a table strictly for display purposes. And in that sense, it's very different from a culinary center that focuses upon creating food and sampling food and the whole gustatory process. And so I, I have really serious reservations about this. I, uh, Christine pointed out at the beginning that the process that is fundamental to the public art uh, procedures and protocols is based on the premise that a budget is established and the artist knows from the artist and the entity that is engaging the artist knows that's the budget. 
and it's approved as a package, budget and proposal. And because this is such a fundamental change, I have very serious questions about going forward in this direction and rather would see us return to the original idea, which was a table with benches in the new location. I have no problem with that. Okay. That's my, my only concern. Uh, Marcy? Yeah. Um, as I recall, when it was presented initially, the benches were kind of more, were going to be functional, not not as companion pieces to the table because exactly. we specifically uh, required that the table not be used absolutely for display for anything like that Nothing we want it to stand on its own it's a piece of public art a sculpture and you wouldn't serve food off of a sculpture no so um, but nonetheless it's part of the whole statement f for this work of art and I feel like as it was presented that the um, uh, these were companion pieces that um, buttressed the impact of the table, too. And I like the fact that people could sit on them. I don't think, are you planning on putting any uh, free-floating furniture in this area? That there will be not, no places? That's not. I, I, or for I, the inn, are you yeah, right? No. Okay, so there's really uh, no, not any place for someone to sit maybe study, study the bench or whatever, like you'd have in an art gallery, you'd have a, an opportunity for someone to, to sit and, and ponder it. So um, I'm not sure if this space, I don't know what the scale of one inch equals 20 feet. Um, I don't know. Uh, looks like with, um, I'm playing decorator here. <laughs> I'm trying to see how it would balance, where to place the benches that it would balance. Um, I don't know, you might have to shift the table up a little bit. Uh, well, whatever, that could be played around with, but my point is that I think the, the, the benches are a vital component of, of the, con of the uh, project. Okay. Okay. Um, John. I'm curious about um, this requirement to be built, adhering to bridge requirements. What, what does that mean? Well, what, what it has to be is it, it has to be joined. Um, I would say bridge more, more like construction, possibly like if they're going to be uh, covering a, or spanning a certain distance for heavy equipment <laughs> and driving across something like, let's say, a creek bed or, or something like that and having to put these together. It's, it's such thickness that it's going to have to be joined using all thread bolting. It's not just a table. You, diff you wouldn't typically join a table with an all-thread style lag bolt designed specifically for a certain thickness of timber, which is what I'm just going to use those because, mm -hmm. it's, because of its thickness and size. Not necessarily for safety because I don't expect people playing on it or <laughs> going, but I do want to make sure that it is so thick that if children are running around and they're able to go underneath it, that it is absolutely up to specs. It's like engineered to be tied together and safe for anyone to be on or below. But they're not gonna be driving equipment on it or anything no. like that? No, but they could. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why, how, how were you planning to do it originally? That I, way. Yeah, that's, yeah, that yeah, makes yeah. sense no, to that's me. Way. It's just that the, before we, uh, in our last meeting, I hadn't, I hadn't milled the actual pieces and weighed them, and I have now, <laughs> and they're significantly heavier than we originally were, were hoping them to be, but they're, they're very thick. Like I said, heavy equipment to you to move each individual piece. Yeah, and it's and it's going to be seven or eight pieces to join together. So yeah. it's heavy significantly. It's not going to move once you put it in place. It's going to stay right there. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, wherever it's set down, it's, it's there. Um, well, I, Ryan, I agree with um, everyone here. That the benches are an important part of this project. Uh, they're, they're not the centerpiece, but a lot of public art has more than just a centerpiece. It has things that help the centerpiece sure. and augment the centerpiece in an important way. I agree with all the comments here. Sure. So I'm looking at the site map to see where the benches could go in this new location and I'm curious this area that looks like it's open it's straight across to the right of the red or orange uh, uh, 
depiction of the new location. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's the space where it says proposed new location for our table happens to be written in there. What is that space? And is it open? May, yeah, maybe Phil, you can answer that. Yeah, here. Well, that, that is the indoor part of the culinary center, that big open But it's space. indoor. It is indoor. Oh, okay. It looks like it's open, but that is an indoor there, space. There's a, there's a large opening there, which is a big barn door that'll open up, but that is inside the Okay. Building. So that's the culinary space. Right. Mm -hmm. Those are tables inside there. Right, so there. forget that space. Um, well, I would encourage you, if this doesn't pass, to eliminate the benches, that you come back and... Uh, there might be some spot here within this garden court, this artist courtyard, where they could go, perhaps on the other side of the fruit trees or between the fruit trees, something like that. Um, and another idea I have that really kind of is a disconnect, so I don't even know if it's a good idea, is to, is to put them along that walkway uh, someplace. Mm -hmm. um, but even that would, forgive but that me, but that would disconnect. represent a major change, too. I mean, yeah, the idea I mean, as presented was a table with yeah. benches. Yeah. 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 Forget yeah. that. It wasn't just benches. It's with the table. Can I ask, can I, I ask a question? Sure. Chair Golding. <laughs> Marcy. Refresh my memory, um, Ryan. What, what, what's, the length, what are the, what's the length of the bench? Each bench is? Uh, eight to ten feet. Okay. And the size of the benches? They're, they're similar to the, the table itself in, in thickness, but it's, it's about 11 by 11. 11 by 11? Each, each, each piece, and there's two side by side, and they're sitting on top of other 11 by 11 and notched in. So they're a standard bench height of 18 inches, okay. but they're going to be thick. And about they're, 22 they're, inches wide. The wide. Yes. The width, I mean yep. the 22 length. 22 Twenty-two to 24 inches width. This way, and yep. then the length would be? 8 to 10 feet. 8 to 10. Mm -hmm. so, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's uh, not going to work. Any other comments or questions uh, for Ryan or Phil on the benches? Or anything that, the, that you would like to say before we take a mo uh, motion on this? Anybody? All right, then we need a, we, we need a motion of some sort, uh, either to accept or reject uh, eliminating the benches. I move that we reject the idea of eliminating the benches and uh, urge the the inn and the artist to return to the original configuration of a table and two benches. We need a second. Second. Uh, and James, you can do a roll call on this too. Commissioner Hirsch. Yes. Yes. Um, Commissioner Edison. Yes. Commissioner Tosher. Yes. Commissioner Merck? No. And uh, Chair Golden? Uh, yes. Okay. So uh, the motion has passed that asks you to return to us with some way to incorporate benches into this new site, which, which is approved. And I can't tell you what to do, but I can give you some history, which normally um, if there's expenses that exceed what the public art allocation is, uh, normally uh, you would work with the developer yeah. uh, to cover that for you. Sure. Um, so, because uh, we certainly understand as an artist that so often artists don't get what they should be getting for a project. So, you know, I say that because sure. I know that you're being totally honest in, in presenting to us that the costs have gone up for this table. Sure. So. Thank you. Okay. All right. We Thank you very right. much. And um, uh, do I'm we sure want to give a that. timeline or ask for this to be presented to us by a certain date? I think that's a good idea. That's a great idea. Yeah. yeah. Can we? What What would be reasonable for you guys to come back and with a plan? The plan would be for the location of the new location for the benches. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. um, is uh, three weeks? Three four weeks? Okay, so why don't we say in a month, a month that we'll get together and you'll show us what you've come up with and okay. hopefully you'll be able to work things out on that end as well. All right. So we appreciate it and we really thank you for coming. And, and, uh, Great. Thank you. I can't thank wait you. to see the, oh, yeah. it's, it's the installation. Yeah. The <laughs> kids you. are working on it too? 
Well, I have pictures of kindergartners standing it, but I didn't bring them. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. Well, we'll look forward to seeing those next time, maybe. Okay. Thank you both. Okay, and then uh, we're going to adjourn this meeting. So the meeting for the um, well, consideration have, for the inn is closed. Yeah, we have them agendized as one meeting. So oh, okay. We could just take the All next right, item. Here it says adjournment. <laughs> After this. All right, well, let's uh, just take a couple minutes to um, get the right papers out. Okay. Same. And which papers are we dealing with now? I don't Same have that. Center. I don't yeah. have a copy of the. Mm -hmm. I don't have, like I don't have that. <coughs> nope. Okay. James, do you have another copy? Because I don't have in front of me the I do. material. All right, so we don't have to recall the meeting or anything like that. We're just going to continue on. And um, um, Aubrey, um, I'd like you, if you wouldn't mind, to come up to the podium and introduce the artist. And maybe you can come up so everyone can meet the artist. And what we're considering here is a proposal for the Sane Living Center on Matillaha Street, uh, <coughs> after the fact, saying qualified for public art. And so it, this has been uh, uh, an unusual process uh, to present public art at the stage where really SANE is ready to open. So we're going to be considering two things today here. We're going to be considering the public art of course is the most important part and we're also going to be considering whether or not to allow SANE to go ahead with their opening plans um, uh, as long as they sign an agreement that they will follow through uh, with the public art uh, by a certain in a, within a certain time frame so it's two two issues here as well okay and this is Aubrey Balkine who I had the pleasure of meeting and he's going to lead us through this process so all yours I've never done this before in terms of public art, and I'm not 100% sure how you want to go through it, but we, we are, both Ray and I are extremely excited about this project, uh, and uh, uh, put a lot of energy into it already. I am sorry about the fact that we're start, starting the process dif differently than you normally do it. We did not think we were going to reach the uh, 300 mark. Um, and uh, when the building department suggested that, said they thought we probably ha might have reached it, uh, and we had a conversation with them, we went through the numbers and it came out to about 302,000 or 4,000, I think it was. and. We probably could have said we would uh, cut some things in the project right now and do them maybe a year or two later to get under the 300. But when I found out about this public art, I was uh, very excited about it and, uh, and decided that we wanted to be part of this. Um, the um, so m I've been an artist my, most of my life, uh, more of a graphic artist, uh, and I have worked in a number of collections, uh, museums, including the Museum of Modern Art in, in New York. And um, the, one of the things I, I've had a, 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 one of the leading graphic art firms in the country uh, one, what we're really known for is uh, our basically integration of um, technology and entertainment. And, uh, in other words, we, we, we have been a major producer of uh, posters for movies um, and uh, the trailers for movies and titles for movies. 
Yeah, on the entertainment side and on technology, we were probably the first major firm to ever use a computer to actually set real type and put it in publications, and we were basically criticized for doing it. Today, <laughs> everyone would laugh that that's, and that's where type does come from. Um, since I sold the company, because I wanted to take my talent, which is to basically be able to communicate, uh, to things that I thought think really matter in the world, as opposed to get more people to see a specific movie or or um, use certain technology, um, and we I I bought the building downtown. It was a funeral. Uh, and uh, and then became it became a place for artists to have plays um, to actually work on what I think are, is in the real problems of the world and to me those are that health has deteriorated and uh, the, the ability to Heal, heal people has been focused on disease as opposed to r true health. And uh, so it was to create a healing center downtown, self-healing center. Um, it's unsustainable the way the world's going, I think, with, with, with health in terms of the, the increased costs and, and, and the lack of the health. With that, the, there, there's these other problems is that we need to heal the earth. And um, so climate change is really important to me. And the last has been, since I have been an expert in technology, is understanding some of the possible problems that artificial intelligence can bring to uh, the world. It, it's, it has great potential, but there's serious problems. So this, this, this sculpture that Ray and I have been working on is about those three elements. And um, we, we see it as a, as, a, as a sculpture that people will, we, we, we hope, be intrigued by it, and it will raise questions. M many questions that they might want to know about, and um, we want to sort of stimulate those questions and provide avenues of solutions uh, for, for people to discuss how we're going to get around that. Um, so um, how many of you have actually read this, or should I just go through some, some uh, short version of it? We all, we all, we all have seen it, and what, what we'd like to do is to have you just give us a, a brief overview of what the project is. Right. So the project is to build a, uh, a, a sculpture um, with material that uh, will last a long time. So we intend to do this with stainless steel. It's a large piece. Um, the, 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 it's it's going to be about the, the actual piece itself is about 20 foot long, but it's a, it's a, it's in a form of a question mark, um, and the question mark is 12, uh, 14 feet long, seven feet wide, and about, it goes from about six foot to eight foot high. So it, it's it, it's it's quite quite large. Um, the uh, th this probably you know we we we're supposed to be able to build something or create a piece of art that's valued at at least six thousand uh, dollars. This will probably be close to double that, and we prepare to pay for the increase. Um, 
I believe that nature is one of the main uh, grounding pieces that we're losing as we going down this path of, uh, you know, cultural in evolution. And um, we already had started on some art that's actually going to be in the building, and I wanted to show those to you. They, 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 they sort of, um, they celebrate the wonders of, 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 of nature. So the two pieces, one is, is we call floating eel, eel grass. And this piece I'm going to show you is, is almost 20, 20 foot long and five feet high. So it's, it's a sam, substantial piece. It's hard to see because of the resolution of the picture, but... And, and just to be clear, these pieces are um, uh, meant to be inside the lobby and not really um, the outside piece, right. the, pub the public, right. public art piece. Yeah. But this is an idea that's more that. mm -hmm. That's a detail. Yeah, a detail. It's yeah. a quarter of yeah, I can see right here is that detail. The other piece is, uh, is basically roots and the energy force that the artist saw in, in, in the roots. So while this is not available to the public at any time, uh, in, in, our, in, the, in the Sane Living Center, center which is what our operation is called, there will be documentary films. There's a lot of education going on. Uh, so a lot of people will visit it. And when there isn't a, uh, something going on, the public will be allowed to come into the lobby. These are in the lobby of the building. Um, so this, uh, the, 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 the sculpture is, is completely different because it has to be outdoors. And Ray, why don't you just we'll sort of show the, the piece. Um, this is a very rough, you know, when, unfortunately when you do things rough, they look like they're finished, but they're not finished. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Ray, will will the words also be included? Uh, yes, the words uh, the words are included. Okay, uh, and the will but they're going to be down on the um, on base. the base, and which is concrete, right. correct? Right. Yeah. So we we this concrete base has to actually go below ground as well, quite a bit, because the, 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 we're talking about something that has significant weight to it. Now, Aubrey, you had told me about the significance of the um, filigree work and how it changes as it goes along, and that it also carries out the theme of the right of the paintings. It, it's it, it, as you see, there's the part that's nature, uh, which is leaves, and, and the same way that the floating eelgrass is. Uh, so it takes its cue from the eelgrass. Um, Having water and uh, and eelgrass is sort of like the beginning of life, um, and that that was important to us. So were the, the roots, the other paint, paintings of, of the roots, um, and for us to understand that we relate to nature. And I also thought it was incredibly important for Ojai to understand what's, what's so special about Ojai. And to me, what's special about Ojai as a, as a place of learning is that it's in the middle of nature, and it's an incredible piece of nature. Um, and we sometimes forget, forget 
how important that is. Um, so we do. We are very community conscious. So we will be having events for community, uh, and uh, we've been talking about this. And some people are saying that you know, what what might we do with students who are here to sort of learn about what we're actually going to be talking about a lot. The center, the other half of the center, besides the education, and by the way, in 10 days we have uh, Gay and Katie Henricks doing their major um, training of people. So there'll be, there'll be about you know, 60 odd people coming to the center next in 10 days. Um, so, um, th th this, this is outdoors, as I said, so what you're seeing there is uh, what, what's black there will be stainless steel. And what you can see through will be the cutout of the stainless steel. So it will actually create shadows on the ground. And we have the ability for special events at, at night to actually shine light through it onto the building. And these, sh these, these pieces would actually exist on, uh, on the building. And we can have multiple, we can have two or three points of doing that. Wow. Uh, where, and they could be in different colored lights. Uh, but but mostly, what 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 it is is, is we we're interested in the, in the, in in the shadows from the sun. Um, it it would be on a north south axis, and in front of it, the 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 round thing there is a bird bath, um, and it, it on its face it's a di there's a dial north south east and west, and we have a new drawing that we've, since we've been working on this. It's basically, there's, a, there's an object above the bird bath that will drop water at, at, at certain intervals so that you see how the water spreads out from the center, um, showing that everything we do has consequences. And that, 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 that we should be aware of the consequences, which <coughs> I believe that medicine doesn't really take into account. Wow. <laughs> you, you, hear, you hear their ads and it says side effects are blah, 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 and, and, you know. But we don't really focus enough on the side effects and the consequences. So that's what the, the bird bath is also, obviously, for birds. Um, wow. <laughs> the, the, uh, we, we, we would like to have a quote next to it on the wall of the building that, that says that uh, it was from Socrates, who basically says that I am the smartest man in the world. Why? Because I know I know nothing. And that's the point we need to actually look at a lot of these issues is from a point of view of saying we, 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 we've got to not think about what uh, you know, our assets are. We've got to think about stuff from a, 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 a mind that is a baby mind that's clear of thought. Okay. So the three, I believe that there are three errors in this cultural microcosm. I mean, I mean macrocosm. It's basically, the first one is nature. And nature is uh, started four and a half billion years ago. Um, and uh, we are an evolution of nature as humans. The second one is sapiens, humans. Uh, humans. And uh, we sort of, moved further and further away from nature uh, in the last uh, few hundred years. Agriculture was probably one of the things that actually has moved us 
and so is technology, and so is <coughs> industrialization. Our bodies are very similar to a lot of plants themselves and to animals, insects, etc. So w the first thing of the leaves is to actually talk about nature. The second one is humans. And nature is like actually the, the iterative process of nature is DNA. With humans, we, what we have is different from a lot of the other the rest of nature is we have minds and we have egos. And the way egos evolve, instead of proliferating, they, they, they tend to go around in circles a lot. Um, so that, that's what we really want to bring about. Um, here we think that this one of the solutions is to be together so all the humans are sort of linked and supporting each other, which is something we, we, we aren't doing enough of. And then the third is the artificial intelligence. And artificial intelligence works with um, algorithms now, <laughs> deep algorithms. They have deep learning mixed with algorithms. So it iterates and iterates and iterates. One of the real frightening parts about it is DNA iterates over four and a half billion years, whereas the um, iteration of algorithms iterates at, a, at accelerating rates. And we're probably now talking about do it iterating at, you know, at less than seconds, as opposed to the kind of time that we span that we live in. So those are the things that we, we want to bring up. And we also want to bring up this, the whole thing about the question mark, is we want people to ask questions. And we will create a website that will be based on dealing with these questions as part of this project. It's not included in the cost, but it's something that we're going to do anyway. Right. Ray, um, I'm going to let it go now to commissioners that are, or uh, CAPA members that might have questions, because we do have a 2 o'clock. So I'm sorry to cut you off a little Fine. bit, but you've really presented a very thorough picture here, and the packet is excellent. So let's start with John. Do you have any questions at all? Um, no, I just think you've done beautiful work here. I'm looking forward to seeing it. Yeah. Marcy. Well, I think this is a, a beautiful example of what public art is meant to do. You have incorporated the, the reason, diete, for your business, for, for the, the center, but you've incorporated it in, and emphasized it with the public art piece. It's just a beautiful integration and with the art, it's carried through with the art on the walls into everything that you'll be doing in the center. So I, I applaud you both for your um, humanitarian and the artistic vision of, of this. I think it's wonderful. My own, I have a couple of questions sure. relating to the environment. Um, the stainless steel, is it possible to use recycled stainless steel, re recycled materials? Sustainably harvested. Come and talk into the mic. Stainless steel, usually uh, to get it recycled, you'd have to go uh, to a place they have seconds. Right. And, and, and I actually have a, a big connection with the, uh, the waste stream of America because I do a junkyard tour. Mm -hmm. And so I, industrial metal is going to be the people we work with, mm -hmm. and they may have uh, a line on that. That's but fabulous if you could try to do that. Second question relates to water and the bird bath, which is, I love the symbolism of that and everything, but you know you're <laughs> there's possible blowback with everyone saying, well, the water, when the water hits the surface of this bird bath, is there spill? over? No, it's one drop at a time. One drop at a time, so you don't imagine that you'll be circulating a lot of water through this piece. And, and, and the drop's not, it's not a fountain. So it's a very slow drip, drip like a leaky faucet, Yeah. kind of. Because we want to see the reverberation in there. Right, so you want enough time to, to elapse so that you could see the... the yeah, I get that. You might want to think about if, if there is any spillage, let's say you have too much water in there and one drop is enough to push a little bit out, 
that you have uh, the, the uh, foundation for this is uh, concrete and underneath that gravel. I don't know if there's a way to get it more permeable or... The, yeah, the water would go onto the concrete if there was water. I mean, Maybe you could slope it or something, so... It is, it is sloped. So the gravel is to actually make it... Right, if it, hit, if it gets there. So yeah, if there's like, an in, like a slope to the, mm. the footing, <coughs> the concrete footing, that would be great. And um, also um, a suggestion um, that the previous artist is uh, doing his table in the process with all of that. Would it be possible to document your process, Ray, in terms of creating this? I, I, let me tell you, documentation is super important because uh, it's actually big time education when you uh, show how we, how we do it. And I, I'm, I'm a teacher at Thatcher School and I do a lot of education and I think that that's really my bottom line, working with children. That's wonderful. Yeah. And a little, little bit about, I think your explanation was so beautiful, Aubrey, uh, some kind of a little mini documentary about this piece and about your center. I mean, we could put it in our public art, on our website, in our public art section and likewise, on your website about the center too. I think it'd be great for marketing for for everyone. Right. My 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 uh, you know I've worked with the sort of probably more of the leading CEOs of this country than most people have, and I've worked with two of the presidents. And uh, I, I'm not I'm doing this to actually make a change in society. I'm not doing it just for any other reason. Mm -hmm. So I think that this can become, and you know, we're looking at getting Ojai on the map nationally and internationally. So that's basically, this is the center is the start of that. It's not, so I think it'll go a long way. If we're yeah. on the map for the right reasons. Anything else, Marcy? No, I think it's beautiful. Michael? I'm excited about this. I really only have one question. I mean, I share the thoughts that have been expressed already. I think the piece in and of itself is quite beautiful. I think the design and the, f the flow of energy in the piece and the transitions from one modality to another is really handled exquisitely, gracefully, and that's, I mean that as praise. <laughs> Um, the question I have relates to the fact that the presentation we have, it shows the question mark white. That's my question. Uh, <laughs> and the model is black, and yet you speak of it being stainless steel. Is it, is it going to have a powder coating, or is it going to be a stainless steel that is just stainless steel, or is it going to be a burnished stainless steel? So those are the options that I see as possible. Just. Just what? So Just no powder stainless coating. steel, no they powder coating. Yeah, they they couldn't we, we they couldn't print it on. The, uh, we just okay. thought the idea was the acetate. Well, they can actually sure. show it, but it's if we, it's just stainless not, steel, yeah. is it going to be untouched and therefore highly reflective, or is it going to be burnished in some way so that it would there, be less reflective? There's many grades of stainless. Uh, today we were looking at his kitchen and they have a brush stainless, okay. which looks... Oh, right. But brushed actually looks like a uh, restaurant. What I want to do is I want to make it totally uh, where my tools make it the same color because I'm going to be welding these big panels together. Uh -huh. And so what I'll do is I'll match the same reflection and it's not going to be a high polish because, as we know, uh, Geary in the Disney Center, they had to actually turn the lights, I mean, they had to debuff it to make it flat. That was, so it that was precisely reflect. my concern. Yeah, you, yeah, you've I, reassured I, me, so I, I have let no Let me put it this way. We're, we're a little bit ahead of what Geary was doing. Good. Yeah. <laughs> and that was it my question three years. as well, so that's great. Yeah. It took him three years. It took me about three hours to come up with this, so it's not a, not a problem. <laughs> Barbara. Um, I have one question and one comment. I think the whole conceptual uh, idea is outstanding, and I think it will be a really a big gift to our community. Um, in looking at this sample, I'm just looking at the end of the artificial intelligence. Is that going to be an open open edge? I'm talking about safety. Oh. Oh. Um, 
or is there going to be an edge on it the way it starts out on the other side? Okay, well, I have that solution. We're going to have a one and a quarter inch stainless steel tube on both ends, oh. which Rounded. will actually be welded on there and embedded into the concrete all the way down. And then that's what's going to be holding this thing up, by the way. We're going to have a foot space holding this up, and those will have uh, little shoes on them that will sit down into the form of the concrete so that we can level it out. And then at that point, where we're all good to go. We'll pour the concrete. And, but yeah, it's going to have a nice soft edge on it, there's no doubt. Oh, what about the top edge? Because top you know, edge. a kid could go to take their hand and run, run well, along there. One of the things, you know, I, I've been doing metal work for many years, decades, mm -hmm. and what I always do is I always deburr it. In fact, I was just talking to him about deburring his steps on his stone he just put in. So I, I definitely have to make it user friendly and, okay. and make a little radius. I, in fact, every single opening is going to be deburred to where a person, because they're going to be wanting to touch that. Yeah. yeah. And, and so that's, that's going to all be like softened, if you will. Good. Fabulous. Fabulous. Follow-up question, it just occurred to me. Would feet fit in there? Is that climbable? Well, I've, I've done uh, work at the uh, Natural History Museum in Los Angeles, and I've, had, I've built these giant tomato cages and growing trellises. And there's a certain dimension in public art and public fences and things that you have to actually have it less than a certain amount so a person's head can't fit in there. Now, as far as a foot, there might be a foot that could go in there, but as far as um, uh, it's not going to be comfortable, number one, and it's not going to be so climbable. I, I don't think uh, it's going to be like a, a jungle gym. I think that because it has a, a certain stature about the way it looks and feels, that, and also a child is not going to, uh, I mean, of course, we don't know what a children's going to do, but I, I don't, it's going to be super strong, number one. Uh, because of the curve, it makes it exponentially stronger as well. In fact, that's why we had to make it a curve to make it work. Uh, but as far as uh, a, a child uh, climbing on it, I, uh, I think that's a really valid question. But I think, you know, if there's a fence, I've, I haven't seen a child in decades climb a fence. I don't know if you have. <laughs> Well, they, they don't do that they're anymore. They're all focused on their iPad or their. Yeah, exactly. They're walking <laughs> right. down the road and uh, they can't. They it's don't out have of fashion, that. fashion, fence climbing. Yeah. And, and we, we, have, we are looking at every piece in it. We are measuring it to those standards. Right. Okay. Yeah, that would be yeah, a And I believe thing. that um, the, the insurance has to be. Uh, uh, yeah. This piece needs to be insured, correct? It does need to be insured. So that would be taken into consideration, I would think, by the insurers, the safety of it. But our questions are very basic. Um, you know, the edges, the top edge, and again, if a head can go through, those are just really good, good things to ask and to think about. So, Barbara, I, I know you had a comment. I do have another question about the water element. Mm -hmm. Having sculpture with water, which I have, it requires a lot of maintenance, even if it's a drop at a time. So, um, you know, are, are you are you saying too much? Is the question mark enough? Well, we, you know, we we prepare to consider that as we go along, and we could just have the question mark. Uh, but today we're going to vote. Right. on whether this project, as you were presenting it, is the one that you're going to do. It, there's no changing it after that, unless you come yes. back and make you, a new You can't alter what you presented. Yeah. Although and we could, I suspect, pass a motion approving the project with the understanding that the bird bath is an option. Right. I think that would be permissible. Uh, I think and it would, too. That would give you the flexibility to yeah. actually complete right your decision making on that one item. You had an alternative, and that was to actually make a, uh, uh, you know, one of those steel drum things. So it would actually, uh, it, it could be just the, um, uh, the, I still like the idea. Uh, you, well, you need to speak into the mic uh, because it's being local. picked oh, up on the we, television. We, we had another idea, which was to have the compass with the north, south, east, and west. I think that that's incredibly important. 
one of the reasons is is that um, the, one of the problems with technology is it can be wonderful, but it also has the ability to take certain things that we actually have in ourselves away from us. And GPS is an example. With GPS, people know, uh, you know, downtown's over there. Um, the younger kids don't know that downtown's over there. They don't know that they're in time and in space in a certain way. And I think that having an understanding where north and south and east and west is, our ancestors knew that because they were outside all the time. They knew where north and south and east and west is, and we don't, losing it. Losing it. So we, I was really liked the idea of a compass. And then we thought these, these drums, they, they, they look like uh, you know, lids on, on, on a saucepan, and we could actually have it on top of the, uh, there, and you could actually get some music in an, in, in an event that would be actually quite, quite wonderful. So yeah, we, uh, I'd be fine with that idea that we, we look at the water issue um, and, uh, and the maintenance of it. Um, so. Yeah, and I think it is those two issues. It's, it's um, the water and it's the maintenance. Now, Barbara, you want to follow up? Because you mentioned lighting. Right. Um, and you said you could do different colors of lights. If, uh, if, 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 or not, it doesn't matter. I, I don't think we want to do lighting as a normal thing. I said only at special events. Like we might have a, by the way, this is called Evo 3. I didn't mention that. Um, we might have an Evo 3 day once a year where we would get people, you know. No, I mean, I, yeah. I like the idea of the lighting, but. But I, I don't I, think I, the I, lighting is part of what we're right. approving. Oh, That's not, just, I think, Aubrey talking about different things that they could do uh, with perhaps it. when an event is going on. Am I correct? Correct. Right. So I think that what we have here, uh, you wanted to make a comment. Well, I mean, I want to cut I you would, off. I think the lighting is really important. Um, and, but I think that having different colors of lighting, no. One, you know, I mean. So you're talking you about lighting the sculpture? You want to create the shadow on right. the wall. Correct. Right? So, so Barbara, you're talking about lighting the sculpture. Yeah. Okay. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. Okay. Which, which you have not incorporated into this design, so we're not considering it. But so it this is a suggestion. Out. We, we, we were talking more, not about lighting the sculpture, we're talking about the shadows, just like you say. But that's lighting the sculpture. Okay, yeah. Right. It's bringing my the interpretation to light. was that you meant the sun will come from the west and hit it and make shadows, not that there'd be artificial lighting. No, that's how I there, heard it. There could, there could be both. Just, yeah. And it could be both. That's all. all right. But I don't think we want to um, get ourselves right. caught into something that isn't part of this presentation and lighting is not part of this presentation. So let's put that aside for now and let's uh, make sure that Barbara, you're finished with your comments or not. And I'm, now it's my turn. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm curious about the base, the concrete base. Is that going to be the color of uh, concrete or stained in some way? So we do need to talk about the base a little bit. One of the things we have done is, is there's, a, there's another change We, 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 instead of in that one where the skull, where the stainless steel actually touches the, the, the base, we, we decided to raise the base uh, so that it's on, um, on sort of like. S solid uh, uh, rod. It's like one inch solid stainless steel that goes into the concrete. And then it, and I make a cut in it and I slip the. Uh, quarter inch metal into it and I, I weld it along the context. Okay. So compared to what we see here, that concrete um, uh, base is uh, higher. No, the, con the concrete base is the same. It's on stilts. It's going to have legs. Bit, so. It's 
going to have legs. It's got legs. Set right in the concrete. Th they're proposing legs to that. See, see this? Oh. There, there are a couple of reasons. One wow. is that is that we can save some of the weight of the stainless steel. So you, you actually you're not seeing you're not seeing the bottom. You're not focusing your eyes on the bottom two feet. Part of it's the concrete. All right. So I'm glad that was explained because I did not pick up on that. Right. So my question remains. It's just a simple question. Um, is the concrete going to be the color of uh, regular, you know, like out of the bag, or are you going to use a, a, a stain of some kind on the concrete? We generally try not to use stain. Okay, so just plain concrete. Uh, so That's all but, I wanted. But, but it'd probably be it probably be white. There is a okay. white concrete you can get. So no color plan. The, all right. We want we want the the, the 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 white to show up a lot. So. This, this area is going to be, uh, in our area, will okay. be the only I've area of grass. Okay. I'm going to move it along here now because okay. we're way, way over time. Um, does anyone else have any really, really pressing questions that you need to add? I think that we've got the full picture. Now, we're not approving this with any consideration for lighting because that was not part of this package. Um, if you want to make a change and you want to add artificial lighting, you would have to come back to a CAPA meeting. Um, the bird bath, I think we have to accept the bird bath the way it is shown here unless you want to revise it. And again, that would be to come back with the revision unless we make a motion that allows the revision to be open. Like whatever you, we, that we trust that whatever you come up with is going to be the best idea. So having said that, we need a motion. <laughs> I move that we accept the proposal as presented with the proviso that the element forming the dot at the bottom of the question mark may be a bird bath or some other decorative slash functional element. Do we have a second? I will second that. Uh, James? Commissioner Hirsch? Yes. Commissioner Addison? Yes. Commissioner uh, Tosher? Yes. Commissioner Merck? Yes. And uh, Chair Golden. Yes. Congratulations. You have passed, you, and, and we're excited. We're so, and Thank I you. have to say, for Ojai to have a Ray Serino, because you have quite a reputation. I did a little research. And I, they call you the mad scientist? Yes. yes of, uh, <laughs> so I think it's just spectacular that we're going to have a piece by you here in Ojai. Well, so. Let me tell you, there's nothing more important at this moment in time uh, than working with Aubrey and best city council anywhere I've ever seen. I mean, oh. You guys are really rock solid. I, I'm also doing a motion to help tiny houses move into the Ohio section with uh, Vena. And, uh, and I, I have fireproof houses that I'm going to be developing here across the street. So was, I'm very active and very concerned about our future, too. And and fabulous. Well, welcome to Ojai. Well, <laughs> this, this is like a Thanks. fantastic. I got right. the going. And thank you. Can, okay, we're going to adjourn this meeting. Well, we had a second item with oh, relation yeah. to him. Opening. Oh, the, ooh, the, uh, don't go away. Temporary certificate of occupancy. We need a temporary certificate of occupancy to be approved. So, um, what is the date that we're asking for? Um, Can I give just a brief, you know, yes, thirty second overview? Um, so. Like uh, Mr. Balkine mentioned, the about a month ago we figured out that this was going to exceed the three hundred thousand uh, dollar limit. Uh, he has plans to have his grand opening. Is it this Friday? No, it's um, it's on the twenty fifth, which is Wednesday. Okay. Okay. So a week and a half from now. So we have realized that the art is not going to be installed uh, when they were hoping to open. So he's requested a um, temporary certificate certificate of occupancy. Uh, by code, we are not able to give the, the complete certificate until the project is completed. So um, what we've asked is, or what we're thinking we can do is issue a temporary certificate of occupancy that would take us through the end of the year, um, through through December. And uh, But I think the project is anticipated to be complete before then. So it would just give some extra time in case, you know, an issue comes up with uh, with an element of the art project and um, and then with the condition we did enter into a written written agreement 
saying that they're going to complete the project, and if not, that the temporary certificate would be revoked. Right. And I have a question for Ray. Uh, is that reasonable to expect that you would have this completed and installed? And by the way, uh, we'll talk, but do you also need to put a plaque up that recognizes this as a piece of public art funded by the art program? And we'll talk about that uh, and where that might go. But is it reasonable that this could all be finished by the end of the year? Mm -hmm. I've built thousands of things, and I could do it probably half blindfolded in about a month. <laughs> so it, it, it's so absolutely okay. reasonable, right. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so then now are we ready for a motion? So a motion, I'll make a motion that we uh, grant uh, an extension uh, to Sane Living so that their certificate of occupancy. Um, temporary certificate of occupancy. Temporary certificate of occupancy. Help me out, Michael, some more. Go. <laughs> uh, run, running, running through the end of the calendar year. Yeah, I think that's okay. sufficient. All right. Uh, second. Second. Uh, roll call. Yes. Commissioner Hirsch. Yes. Uh, Commissioner uh, Addison. Yes. Commissioner Tosher. Yes. Commissioner Merck. Yes. And Chair Golden. Yes. Okay. Yay. <laughs> Thank and you now the meeting you. is adjourned. <laughs> and um, Barbara and um, John. We're Happy to have you restart. take your leave because we're going to have a very brief public art committee meeting oh, now. You are. Okay, yes, yes. To consider a waiver request. Good to see you. You're right. We're getting it all done at once. Oh. You read my mind, those questions you asked. Oh, well, that's good. Ray, okay. thank you so much. No, no problem. Thank you for coming out. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'm really excited. Okay, I know you do. We can't wait. I'm going to stop by and take a look. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. You shouldn't be doing it unless you have fun. It's great. <laughs> <laughs>